have your Bibles turn first to Ecclesiastes chapter number one. Great is the Lord and he is greatly to be praised from this time forth and even forevermore from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Your name, O Lord, is worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you again for this great day, this glorious day, this beautiful day, this magnificent day of rejoicing in you, the God of our salvation. We have come into this house, into your presence, O oh God, to lift up your name, to give you glory and honor, to sing your praises, to sing your worth, O oh God, and to, amen, make known your blessings and your miracles and your signs and your wonders and your promises and your Oh God, goodness toward the children of men. We open now our mouths in praise and adoration to you, O King of kings and Lord of lords. Blessed be your name, O Lord, this day. We thank you for healing, deliverance. We thank you for victory over all of the works of the darkness. God, be glorified today in your people. Open eyes, open ears, open hearts. Lord, remove the shackles, oh God, the scales, the chains, oh God, that men might see and come to know that you are the true and the living God, and there is none like you. No other way. Blessed be your name from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen and amen. Thank God for Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. The way of prosperity is what we want to give to you today. The way of prosperity. God has provided for every generation the way of prosperity. By the way, it's only one. It's only one way of prosperity. Amen. And he's provided it for every generation. And this way of prosperity will not change. It will not cease. It will never go out of existence. And it's guaranteed to prosper. The way of prosperity is guaranteed to prosper. But, please understand, the way of prosperity, it does require participation on the part of those who are going to walk in the way of prosperity. You got to participate. And now this is how, let me tell you how already, I'll just tell you up front, amen, how we are to participate in the way of prosperity. Number one, hear the word. The word of the Lord. Number two, believe the word. You gotta, you gotta do more than just hear it. You gotta believe it. Because every everybody hears, Jesus talked about this in this closing of the amen, the sermon, what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, but then you have the others who hear the sayings but don't do them. So we have to hear the word, number one, believe the word, yes. number two, and then we have to obey the word. Yes. And then these two things, these last two things, amen, this comes from within with the power of God working in us. Number four, be strong. Right. Hello? Yes. And number five, be of good courage. Yes. Because in this world, you will be tested. Yes, sir. Your faith will come under fire. Yes. Matter of fact, the Bible promises it speaks to those who live in godly in Christ Jesus. The Bible says those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You will come under fire when you take a stand for what is right. 
for what is holy, Amen. for what is biblical, for what is godly. There will be giants that you will have to slay. There will be mountains you're going to have to face. And this is for and to every generation. Doesn't matter. Every generation is going to see it. Every generation is going to face it. Amen. Faith, this is something God, God has de decreed, by the way. The just shall live by faith. It's not an option. Amen. So, please understand that the majority of people in every generation will not walk in the way of prosperity. They're going to take the way that seems right to them, that looks right, that feels right to them. Amen. The majority of people, the vast majority of people in every generation is going to take the way that leads to the, that is the path of destruction. They're not going to take the way of prosperity because they're not going to hear the word. They're not going to believe the word. They're not going to obey the word. They're not going to be strong in the word and they're not going to have the courage to stand the test, to stand when the fire comes, to stand when persecution comes. But Jesus, by the way, told his disciples, blessed are you when men revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name say what are you to do when that happens Jesus said rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward that's in heaven oh oh oh, oh boy we need the help from heaven we need help from heaven I want you to turn to Ecclesiastes I want to read a few verses there first verse number four chapter number one because again there is, in every generation, testing. The Bible teaches here, under the sun, while we are here on this earth, verse number four, that one generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises, the sun goes down, Hastens to the place where it arose. The wind goes toward the south, turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, but yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which may be said, see, this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. There is no remembrance of former things nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after every generation goes through this every generation experiences this amen we have horrible memories We do. We do. We have horrible memories. And I believe that much of it is deliberate suppression because of the fear, because of the torment, because of the terror. And we don't want to. We just want to. We don't want to. We don't want to remember. But every generation will face their own trials, tests, tribulations, and every generation has to be taught. Every generation is going to have to be reminded. Every generation is going to drift their own way. They're going to go their own way. They're not going to go in the way of prosperity because, again, they're not going to hear the word. 
without a preacher. And God says, how can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? God sends the preacher, and God has spoken. It's not that God has not spoken. Are we listening? Are we hearing? Every generation is going to have their troubles. Every generation is going to have and going to need great leaders, by the way. Every generation needs them. And every generation needs to be courageous. You're going to have to have courageous people to stand up against evil, to stand up against lies and deception. Because the devil is your adversary, and he's seeking to kill you. Every generation. Every generation needs to know the Lord. Know the power of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Every generation needs to call upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, call upon the Lord while he's what? Near. Right. Yes. Call upon him. Right. Forsake your way. Don't go that way you think is right. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought and let him turn to the Lord. The Bible says that he will abundantly pardon. Our God will have mercy to those who call upon him. And every, every generation needs not to forget God. That's a recipe, automatic recipe for disaster, for doom, for judgment. The nation that forgets God, the Bible says, will perish. Don't forget God. Don't forget who is the creator, who is the provider, who is the sustainer, who gives you the very breath that's in your body. You say, well, I'm breathing and I'm in good health because I exercise and I eat right. No, no, no. Every generation needs to know this. They need to praise because you have breath. That's the only qualification, by the way, for praising God is breathing. You don't have to be in church. You don't have to be saved. You need to be saved. I'm talking about praise. Now, worship is a different thing altogether. But after, by the way, and this is where it begins, and this is the indictment upon man, Romans chapter 1, the indictment upon man is that he is unthankful. He won't even acknowledge God. That's where it begins. It begins with simple acknowledgement that God is my provision, protection. He's the source of my breathing, my existence, my being. In him we live and move and what? Have our being. And Jesus said it this way, without me, apart from me, you can do nothing. Joshua chapter number one, a new generation, a new generation, a new generation. Mm -hmm. Joshua chapter one, after the death of Moses, Moses was the old generation. Moses died. Amen. 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 That's why every generation needs leaders. Every generation needs to be taught. Every generation needs to be reminded, instructed in the way of prosperity. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Hear these words when God speaks. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, Joshua knew that already. But sometimes we need to be reminded that Moses is not here anymore. Moses is gone. See, a lot. Of, by the way, there, those people, especially in that generation, and by the way, most of them had perished already in the wilderness by this time because now the leadership, the mantle is passing over to Joshua 
And 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 during that time, these people were all, I mean, they had their, their, their eyes fixated on Moses. Moses. Moses is still up in the mountain. We don't know what happened to Moses. Let's make us another God because Moses is not here. See, people, let me tell you something about worshiping man, falling prey to, amen, the charisma and the, and the, and the, and the popularity and all of that. People will worship man, and listen, to me, he's going to die. She's going to die. Amen. And what you going to do after that? So the Lord says, Moses, my servant, is there. Is your salvation in the preacher that preached the gospel to you? Is your salvation in the, in the, in, in the, in the church in the church where you came from 40 years ago? Is that where your salvation is? Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, Joshua, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Oh, I like this. Oh, I, I love this, by the way. Look at verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, look what God says, I have given you. Because this is what I said to Moses. See, it, it, it goes beyond the Moses. God's promises goes beyond the man. God's promises goes beyond the, 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 the last generation. Oh, yes. Every place where you put your foot down, Joshua, I've already given it to you because I spoke it to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. Joseph knew it and Moses knew it and now I want you to know. Yeah. From the wilderness, now he gives them a description. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea, Toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Uh oh, I really like this one. I like verse 5 even more. Oh, it gets gooder and gooder, somebody said. Oh, I, I really like this one, see. Look what he says No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Woo! You know what that means? No. Undefeated. For those of you that are not sports fans, right now, this is not, I, I can promise you, I can guarantee, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you on the authority of my decades of watching sports, I can guarantee you this, okay? Right now, there's a team in the NBA that is undefeated. At this point, this is this is this is highly improbable. It doesn't happen that often. But the Cleveland Cavaliers right now are, I believe, 16 and 0. They have not lost a game yet. One of the greatest teams, and there have been a lot of great teams. I'm just I'm just giving this to show you this. Not get ready to go into sports, okay? Chicago Bulls, many of you remember the season with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, 72 and 10, I believe it was. They only lost 10 games for the whole season. But they lost 10. I'm not going to lose any. Joshua, you're not going to lose a single contest because nobody is going to be able to stand before you and listen to what he said, all the days of your life. 
Man. Cleveland's going to lose. I don't care. I can guarantee you that. They're going to lose a game. They're going to lose one ten. <laughs> They're going to lose. But if you are in the way of prosperity, Joshua, look what God said. You will never lose. You will never lose. Nobody that comes up against you will be able to stand before you. All of your enemies, God is saying, you know what he's saying to Joshua? All of your enemies I've already defeated. All of your opposition is going to rise up. Every, every mouth is going to be stopped. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. That's what he's saying. Oh my God, every place where you walk is going to be yours. Nobody's gonna be able to stop you. Man, I wish we believed the word. Help us, Jesus. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. He said, "Look what he says." As I was with Moses. Yes. And Moses was undefeated too, by the way. That's right. That's right. He says, so I will be with you. Yes. I will not leave you. Oh, nor forsake you. Boy, yeah. help me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, he says, be strong and of good courage. For to this people, you, see this is God is speaking already to the future. This has not even happened yet. They're not, they're not crossed over Jordan. They're, they, they're not at the promised land. They're not in the territory. They're not in the place. But God is already speaking into the future as to what Joshua will do. This is what you will do. For to this people, you, Joshua, shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. See, when God makes a promise, it's done. It's already done. Now you say, oh, well, wait a minute. What about uh, people that don't like it? What about the opposition? Doesn't matter. Don't matter. Don't matter. Doesn't matter. Because you know why it doesn't matter? Because no man will be able to stand before you. Nobody's going to be able to oppose you. Nobody can stop the will of God. Nobody can stop the plan of God, the purpose of God, when God has decreed. No man. So Joshua, just be strong and of good courage. Only be strong, verse 7, and very courageous. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. You know, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going over into a strange land. I'm going over to I'm in a new job. I, 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 I'm at the bottom of the, I'm at the bottom of, I got to start at the bottom because I'm the, I'm the, I'm the new kid on the block. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Been there. Somebody favor, favor. <laughs> God give you favor. Yeah. I just got here. Yeah. And favor. I remember it just popped in my head. I, I don't even remember who the, uh, the, uh, the the bishop was, but this was back during the time of the Depression when jobs were just, I mean, just super scary. People, I mean, just lined up to get jobs. And he went in a, what a crowd of people. 
And the Lord told him to put on this particular hat. He put on the hat. He went to apply. And again with this horde of people looking for work. And when he got there, they come out and you just imagine. 300, 500, 700 people applying for one job. So the man comes out, he looks around. You there in the hat. <laughs> Let's pray for y'all. Only God can do that. that was, he's already made the way for you. Now, what did he, what did he have to do? He just had to obey. Put on the hat. Put on the whole armor of God. Just, oh, God, help us, Jesus. Only be strong, very courageous. Observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, command. Do not turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. For then, oh my God. Oh, he said that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law, uh oh, oh, watch this. This book of the law, verse 8, shall not depart from your mouth. Boy, but if you don't know, if you don't know, if you don't know, if you don't know the word, you don't know the promises. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's not that it is not given to us. It's not that it's not been provided for us. We just, it's not that God has not spoken. Have we heard? Have you not known? Have you not, have you not heard? God has spoken. Moses, I was with him. Joshua, I'm going to be with you. But the book of the law, my, what I have written, what I have spoken, what I have decreed, don't let it depart from your mouth. But you shall, uh-oh, watch it, meditate on it. Day, day. Oh, that sounds for me, you know. That sounds like Psalm number one. Uh-oh, y'all y'all getting Psalm number one every Sunday. <laughs> Bless, I'm, I'm going to say it again. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the river of the water, bringing forth fruit in season, his leaves also shall not wither. Uh oh, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall. It shall prosper. So, Joshua, if you just meditate in my word day and night, if you will observe to do according to what I've written in it, then, uh-oh, verse 8, then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know what I like about God? First of all, he is so patient with us. And he knows we are dull of hearing. We are slow to believe. You know how many times he had to reiterate the promises of Abraham? Seven. Go back and read it. Seven times. Seven times. He kept to, and he patiently just reaffirmed. Abraham would go down to Egypt. Sarah is my sister. Abraham would go up to Philip. Sarah is my sister. He was, he was afraid. There was fear. But listen, this is a faith walk. We grow in faith. We grow in knowledge. And God is so patient with us. 
And he will tell you over and over and over again. He'll remind you. That's what he does. He reminds Joshua. Because if you go back and read in Deuteronomy, everything that the Lord is saying to Joshua here, he already spoke it through Moses to Joshua over and over again. And now after Moses is dead, God comes and tells him again. The same thing. I got you. In other words, he said, I got you, man. That's what he's saying. I got you. So after the death of Moses, it's now Joshua's time. It's now his responsibility. It is his calling to take this new generation. Because remember, the old generation died in the wilderness because of unbelief. They perished with the exception of Joshua and Caleb. So now there's a new generation of people that don't know, that have not necessarily experienced the power and the provision of God right. as their parents did. And so Moses is dead, and now Joshua, your responsibility is to take these people over into the land that I swore to their fathers. Mm -hmm. Every leader Every leader needs strength. Every leader needs courage. Every leader needs a vision. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people what? Every leader needs direction. And he needs reassurance. And thank God. <laughs> thank God every leader that he appoints always gets vision, always get, amen, strength from him, by the way, all of this comes from God, we get direction from him, amen, and we get reassurance, because again, we are slow to hear sometimes, and we're slow to believe, so God has to reassure us over and over again, amen, and every, need, every leader needs it. Now, on the other hand, courage comes from believing in the promises of God. Believing in the power of God. The provision of God. The protection of God. That's where the courage comes from. But let me tell you something. I, I, now maybe, and, and I, 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 I didn't do a search of this, but in my mind, in my memory, I don't know anywhere in the Bible where God gave, granted people courage. Courage comes from believing God. When he speaks and he tells you to be strong, to be of good courage. Now, if he gave, he was giving, if he was giving Joshua the courage, why would he need to tell him to be of good courage? It comes when we believe in God's provision, God's protection, God's power. It comes when we believe God. What do you think Shadrach and Meshach and Meshach got that courage from? They believe God. They said it too. <laughs> they said it. The God that we serve is able. And he will. And either way, we're not going to bow. That's courage. You said, by the way, that Nebuchadnezzar, that king, had autonomous power. God gave it to him. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 5, whom he would, he slew. And whom he would, he kept alive. He did not have any checks and balances on him. But one. And that was God. He had autonomous power that God gave to him. And they stood before this man with the courage of their conviction because they believed God. 
That's where courage comes from, believing God. And I'll give you one more example, very quickly. When you go to the New Testament, y'all remember Peter, James, John, all of the disciples, all of the apostles. Peter particularly. Let me just use Peter. I'm not picking on Peter. I'm not going to pick on Peter. But Peter was the one who denied Jesus, right? Yes. Now all of them fled, all of them ran, all of them left him, all of them forsook, forsook him. But Peter was there and he denied Jesus before the cock crew. You know the story. But something happened after the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. After Peter received the Holy Ghost. After Peter his eyes were open and he believed everything that Jesus had been telling them all along. Now he he's got it. Now he's got it. And all of them, by the way, who were hiding, when Jesus rose from the dead, he had to come and find them. They were all hiding in the house. And Jesus come right through the door. Without opening the door, by the way, because he is the door. And, and, and they were all cowering in fear. But after they received the power of the Holy Ghost and they believed all of the scriptures, all of the things that Jesus had been teaching them, and they, they understood it, guess what happened? Courage. Courage. To stand before the council, to stand before the very people who were seeking to persecute them, the very people who were putting them in prison, locking them up, threatening them, and telling them, do not preach in the name of Jesus ever again. And what did Peter say? You know what? <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> You're too late. I got the I can't I got the can't help it now. Do you have the can't help it? I can't help it, man. Amen. You do what you got to do. He told us we believe him. We're standing with him. Peter had courage now that he did not have before. So Joshua, you're going to need to be of good courage. Because Joshua had already, he'd already seen the hand of God. He'd already seen the power of God. He said he saw the miracles in Egypt. He saw God's hand move all through those 40 years. By the way, Joshua was almost 80 years old at this time. Mm -hmm. He saw all these things yeah. under the leadership of Moses. He saw the signs and the wonders that God did. He saw the provision. He ate of the manna in the desert, in the wilderness. He drank from that same water from the rock. Yeah. But now Joshua gets his own charge. Yeah. Joshua, get up! And get over to the other side of this Jordan. That's right. Take this people over there to the land that I promised. He got, and but, but, but again, God doesn't tell you something without giving you a guarantee. He's got to give you an assurance. Look what he says to Joshua. Every place where your foot treads, I've already given it to you. And then God gives him, gives him rather, a description of the land. He describes the territory. In other words, I, Joshua ain't just wandering around. I don't know where he's going and where it's going to be. No, Joshua, I'm going to give you a description of the land because the land belongs to me and I'll give it to whoever I will. Oh, some people don't like it. The earth is the Lord's, may I remind you, in the fullness thereof, the world and everything that's in it. He made it. For his glory and honor. Yes. And for his good pleasure. Amen. Amen. All things were created by him. Right. All things were made by him. Right. And without him, nothing. nothing. Amen. This land. Y'all remember singing that song in, in school? <laughs> this land is your land. This land is my. No, it ain't. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. That's just the beginning of erroneous teaching in school, by the way. It belongs to God. So he gives Joshua 
a description of a land. A vivid description of a land. Oh, but then again, if I may go one more time, he gives Joshua the assurance of victory. Yes. Nobody will be able to stop you. Jesus said, upon this rock I what? And the gates of hell what? Nobody's going to be able to stop. Nobody can stop. You can't. Can't stop what God has decreed, what God has purposed, what God has, amen, uh, 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 designed in his mind from eternity? Who's going who's gonna to do it? Nobody. Nobody can stop him. Nobody can stand before him. And nobody, Paul says, can even question him. And say, what are you doing? But most importantly, I write this. Joshua gets commands that he must obey by faith. See, God has given to him everything that he has already promised to do. He gave it to his fathers. I, I was with Moses. I'm with you. But now, Joshua, even though I have given you all this provision, even though I've given you my word, I've given you my promises, guess what you got to do? You got to walk in it. So Joshua, these are the things that you must do. That's right. Come on now. Yes. 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 And now you don't do it again with nothing. It's not, you don't go out and do it with nothing in your hand. Nothing in your mind. Nothing in your head. I've already given you everything you need. Now, Joshua, all I need you to do is be strong. Yes. Be courageous. Obey all the law. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Joshua, if you do these things right here, strong, courageous, obedience, do not be afraid. Don't live in fear. Uh-oh. Don't live in fear. Don't live in doubt. Don't live in unbelief because God has spoken. Oh, see something? See, we're looking at mountains. We're looking at giants. Oh, we're looking at the waters in front of us, the Red Sea. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, my God. We're doomed. No, Joshua. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Because if you do these things, Joshua, your way, Joshua. Look what the Bible says. It's guaranteed to be prosperous. And you will have good success. So it really just comes down to this. Do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Do not be partakers with other men's sins. In other words, stay with the word. Stick with the word. Amen. Because it's going to pollute you otherwise. Settle your mind on the promises of God. Amen. Let them sink in. Yeah. Let them settle in. Oh, yeah. See, that's why, and that's when you can see this in the Bible, when people, amen, were facing their challenges, their situations, their circumstances, their problems, their tests, their trials. You know what they did? They said, Lord, you said. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't know what he said. You can't say what he said because you don't know what he said. But if you know what he said, you say what he said. Yeah. Now, what did I just say? <laughs> just know what he said. And then you can say what he said back to him. Because he said it to you more than once. And he said it. And he said it again. And again and again and again. And he keeps on saying it. But all we... Jesus excoriated the people in his day. He said, these people, he said, their ears are dull of hearing. They have closed their eyes. Miracle after miracle, sign after sign, wonder after wonder. The things that Jesus did, 
Nobody could do those things. It was impossible for anyone to do the kind of miracles that Jesus did. And he did them in such abundance. John wrote at the end of his gospel, he said, I suppose that the world would not be able to contain all of the books that could be written. All the stuff that Jesus did. But what happens is people close their eyes and their ears are dull of hearing. So settle your mind on the promises of what God has spoken. Oh, help us, Jesus. Oh, Lord, help, 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 help. Oh, my God, help us, help us, help us. Help us, help us, help us, help us. Some of y'all, your batteries and your remote need to die, and it shouldn't, shouldn't be any more on, on and, and hopefully you ain't got no more. <laughs> so the news will turn off, and you ain't listening to what's going on in the world. Turn it off! And then your Wi-Fi goes out, and you, you, you can't even get it on your wall. I can't get it Shut it down! All the lies and deception. All that comes from the God of this world. Then take your Bible, pick it up, read what God said. Settle your mind on what he has promised. On his provision. On his power. On his protection for you. All you got to do, Joshua, that's all you got to do. Because I got your provision. I got the power. You've already seen that. I got your protection. Because nobody's going to make me stand before you. So that means I, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to keep you everywhere you go. And every place where your foot treads is yours. just apply our faith to what God has said. We will not fall and we will not fail. You can't. This is the way of prosperity. Because Joshua, look what he said again. I want you to read, I, I read one more time. Got to read one more time. Got to read one more time. One more time. One more time. Look at it. Look at it. Joshua, stay right there. I'm going to start at verse 5. No man Shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. I was with Moses, Joshua, and I'm going to be with you. You saw it, you saw it, you saw it. So all you got to do, Joshua, is to be strong and to be of good courage. This people, you will divide the land for this people. I'm going to do it through you, Joshua. I swore to your fathers, and it's already done. I just need you to be strong. I just need you to be very courageous. That you may observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Joshua, don't turn to the right when you hear the news. Don't turn to the left when you see the headlines the gossip magazines that you may prosper wherever you go. And this book of the law, my word, my promises shall not depart from your mouth. But I want you, Joshua, to meditate on it day and night. Because there are going to be distractions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of distractions in this world. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, Isn't it? Sir. Oh, my. I mean, how, don't, don't answer. How many social media accounts do you have? And how much time do you spend there? Don't answer. Don't answer. <laughs> Meditate in the word day and night. Observe to do all according, he says, to what is written, and then you will make your way prosperous. Joshua, the provision is already before you. The door is already open.
open and no man can shut it. But all you got to do is walk in my word and walk in my law and you are guaranteed prosperity. My God. And you'll have good success. Some people got success, but they don't, but it ain't good success. They they count they count because of the dollars they got. And they they like that rich man who think they got it made. They don't know. They don't know. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? Lose his soul. This is the way of prosperity that God has provided. And all you got to do is just walk in it. Hear the word. Believe the word. Obey the word. Be strong. And be of good courage. You got to have courage when you are surrounded by temptation from the enemy. When you're out with your friends and they're all encouraging you to go the same way that they're going. Come on, man. We Solomon told his son, don't, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. Don't walk with them. Don't run with them. Don't go with them. You know what that takes? It takes courage. It takes courage to stand against opposition, to stand against Pressure. When everybody else is conforming, be not conformed, but be transformed. Oh, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your promises. We thank you that you've already made the way of prosperity for us. And we simply need to walk in it by faith, stand on your word. Stand on your promises. Know that you've already made provision for us, that you have protected us already, that you will never leave us, that you will never forsake us, that no one will be able to stand before us all the days of our life, that we have victory, that you've made us more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. Lord, we thank you that you always cause us to triumph. No matter what. No giants. No mountain, no storm, no demon, no hell, no principality, no power, no scheme, no trap of the enemy will be able to prosper against your people, O oh God. Because you promise. Your word promises. And you've already declared that we are more, more than conquerors. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just help us. Just help us, Lord. Just help us to believe your word, to increase our courage, our boldness to stand in such an evil time, in such a day as this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that it's already done. Thank you. Thank you that is already accomplished in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is already done in heaven. God be glorified in your church today, your people today. All praise, all glory, all honor to you, both this, this time and forevermore. In Jesus' name.